Hi everyone. My name is Chehofa Josibogo, but you can call me Miss S. I like being uh, referred to as Miss S because my name is a bit difficult to pronounce. I am from South Africa. I teach in primary school. I think they usually refer it as elementary, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. I teach, I teach grade threes. Yes. Um, currently, in my career, I'm still pursuing my career. I'm doing my, I'm furthering my studies. I'm doing my honors and doing other things. But yes, that, that is me. Hi. My name is Padmaja. I'm an eighth grader. Today, I would like to ask you a question. Can I ask, ma'am? Oh, yes, you can ask. Could you please share some effective math study techniques? When you study maths, you need to be active in learning. You need to listen all the time when your teacher is teaching you. Number two, you need to practice all the time. If you practice all the time, you, you, you will never get anything wrong. For example, let's say it's a new concept. And when the teacher is introducing a new concept, maybe you don't understand it. If you practice it over and over again, you will get to learn it. That is step number two. And step number three, you can do peer practicing. Um, you can have study groups with your peers. You sit together. When you sit together, you arrange with them. I am good at this, and this one is good at that, and that one is good at this. Let's share our, our knowledge together. And when you do that, you are going to learn. And you are going to be collaborative about with one another. And you will be thinking, you will be learning critical skills of thinking together to solve that particular problem without even involving the teacher. And then you can maybe involve the teacher when you are stuck somewhere. I, I usually recommend that, that method. If you learn with your peers, if sometimes you feel like maybe you don't understand the teacher, it, it, it works almost all the time. And the last one, I suggest spaced repetition. The question is, what is space repetition? Space repetition is when you start, you have study sessions over time. Uh, when you have study sessions over time and you are tackling, you are trying to solve different concepts on different days. You are going to to um you are going to solve different problems on different days of different concepts. And that will also lead you to be more interested in maths because at the end of the day, you cannot be stuck on one concept over time. Then if you do that, it will really help you. It will really help you study your maths effectively. Hi. This is Nandi Kishar, a ninth grader from Jetpatch Sarvaram. I would like to ask you a question. Here my question is, how do you connect math concepts to real world situation? Okay. No, I think... Okay. Can you still see me? Yes, yes, yes. We can. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, here is, is what I do. When, when I teach maths or when a teacher is teaching maths, when they relate maths to the daily activities that we do, it becomes easier for learners to relate with the concept. For example, measurement. You do measurements, right? 
yeah yeah there are common topics yes. in mathematics yes <laughs> so when you do your your measurement let's say maybe elena has no idea of how to measure or they never came across the concept of measurement you can just take what's this a container maybe it's written to liters uh, uh, um i'm sorry i'm i'm going to use our our measuring units i'm not quite sure what measuring units you you use but i'm sorry but let me just put yeah, it please. in a simple manner yeah let's say you take and take bottles or different containers immediately when you take different containers of things that they usually use at home let's say you are soap or water or a drink different containers they will immediately relate it to real life that oh it's soap so when it's soap it's two liters then they can immediately react towards the concept measurement and they, they will go on and on and another thing number two how i relate to it is i use technology because I realized that kids these days, they love technology so much. They are always on their phones. So when I teach, I find something that is trending most of the time because they like looking at TikTok and everything. I look for something that is relevant to them because they always know what is happening. And then I try to teach them, try to teach the concept to relating to what is trending at that particular time. Then they quickly adjust to the content and it becomes easier for them to grasp anything. And also another thing, I use the method of data analysis. You know, when you are, um, when you are teaching things like um, data, data handling when you handle that when you do data handling data handling is something that you do in in real life and we are always living within it because we live meds we breathe meds everything is meds even though sometimes we might think oh it's just meds but we are living meds so let's say you are doing data handling in a classroom you may can ask um uh, my learners how many of you like the color blue then those that love the color blue, they will raise up your hand. You write the number on the board. How many of you like the red color? They raise up their hand. How many of you like the black color? They raise up their hand. And then just like that, we are building a graph or we are building a pictograph or we are building whatever graph, but we are building what? They were building that. So that's how I usually relate to them when they, when they, when, when I teach data handling so it's basically different methods to different to different concepts which at the end of the day leads them to to be able to relate to the concept in real life i just make sure that in every lesson that i teach it's something that they can see and something that they are living yeah Yes, absolutely. I do agree with you because 21st century math teacher, 21st century English teacher should always mm -hmm. connect the students with the real world situations. So that's how the students can connect very easily. Yeah. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Eighth grade from JPH school. Here I would like to ask you a question. Can I ask ma'am? Would you mind telling us your favorite math lesson? My favorite math lesson? I, it's a lot. <laughs> it's hard to pick out one. <laughs> uh, it's a bit difficult to pick out one lesson, but I can say my most, my most favorite one is fractions, teaching fractions. I love teaching fractions so much because there's a lot of confusion in them. And the minute when I start teaching them and outlining the basics and a few of unspoken rules when teaching fractions, it, it becomes 
so enlightening and it, it becomes so easy and immediately learners start liking fractions because in most cases, you'd find that learners don't like treating the concept of fractions because they tell you it's difficult. They don't know how to approach them. So I really enjoy fractions so much. Can I just tell you something quickly? Please. <laughs> so it happens that um, just last week, we went to a teacher's conference. And when we, when we were there, we were addressing this matter of, of fractions. And it was so amazing to know that it, sometimes it also confuses us as teachers. It does. So it was a matter of they outlined questions. So there were two children. And they said they both had chocolate bars. When they had chocolate bars, one child ate one over two, the fraction of one over two of the chocolate. And this other one ate three over four of the chocolate. And then they said, who ate the biggest part? And it was a bit confusing. And you know what I told them? And, 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 and I'd like to tell your learners as well. The trick to fractions all the time. The bigger the fraction is, the smaller it is in real life. <laughs> Do you agree? That's very interesting, in fact. Yeah, it, mm. it, it is. It is interesting because if, let's say, maybe we have to eat a whole loaf of bread, and I am here at my house. I am eating it alone. I'm, I'm going to eat the whole one. And then if you come and join me, now I'm going to eat less because I'm going to have to cut it into two. So between one and one over two, the biggest one is one. Mm -hmm. So the, the more the fraction it is big in number, the smaller it is in real life. So that's how I teach my children and they never get it wrong. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Hello. How are you, ma'am? I'm fine, and how are you? I'm also fine, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. This is Nanta, an eighth grader from JPH School, I love her, I want to ask you one question, ma'am. Can I ask? Yes, please, you can ask. How do you handle students who dislike math? I, I realize that students that dislike maths it can be either because they're not they're not understanding what i'm teaching or they are lacking the basics of the concept that i'll be teaching so what i do i address the the the, the basics i check their, pri their prior knowledge. Their prior knowledge is referred to as the previous knowledge of what they know before I can teach them. And I build upon what I know, or I mean what they know, and then I build upon it. For example, let's say if now I want to teach you um, numbers. If when I teach numbers, let's say we are talking about the place value, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the units, tens, hundred thousands. If you do not know the name of the number, if you do not know what number is that, when you are looking at it, you can never know the place value of the number. You can never know that this number is a unit, this number is a tens, this number is a hundred. No. You, you can never know that. So I basically just address the, the basic skills, their previous knowledge, and I build upon that and make it and make the lesson more interesting. And once I have mastered that, I know their foundation. I, I When I build upon it, I start making interesting lessons. The question can be, what is an interesting lesson? An interesting lesson is a lesson whereby learners play. They learn through play. And how do they learn through play? When they learn through play, maybe I can come up with, with a game. 
and say, my kids, let's play a game of numbers. Maybe they're stationed in groups. Tell me the number that you have. Everyone pick up a number. Maybe they can pick up their number and they hold it unto themselves and say, okay, what number are you holding? They will be thinking that they are playing, but they are actually learning. And it becomes more interesting for them to learn that they are playing. And then it, it the, the whole class, the whole class will participate. The minute they they participate, the minute they take part in the lesson, the minute they answer me, I will be able to know where they are lacking. I'll be able to know their problems. I'll be able to know how far am I going with them. I'll be able to know where to go back to them and address some of the issues they have. And I think you, the kids, or already can see that, oh, the teacher today came in class and we learned this thing this way. And tomorrow he's going to come in class and we are going to learn a certain concept in a different way. And that for me on its own, when I do not use the same method of teaching on every concept, it becomes interesting for the learners and they will always engage in this active learning. So yes, that's how I kept them activated in my classroom. Thank you so much. Hello, ma'am. Hello. My name is Sheikh Mehnaz Begum. I'm an eighth grader from PHS Elavaram. It's my honor to ask this question. Can I ask, ma'am? Can you give yes, an please. example of project? Can you give an example of project that helps students see relevance of math in everyday life? Okay. I give my learners a project of them building a family vacation to to wherever they want to go. And so I'll tell them, and hey, my kids, where where is your desired vacation place, your 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 vacation destination? And they will each tell me, and then I will ask them, how many are you in the family? And then also they will tell me because we differ. Some come from a family of five, some of four, some of two, or some of three. And then I will give them a project and say, mm, okay, so let's say you are a family of five or three or two or whatever, plan a family vacation to that place from where you live to that place. Number one, in this project, this is what I'm expecting because in maths, we deal with money. Number one, they need to research. They need to research about the place that they are going to. What kind of a place is it? Where is it actually located? What are the activities when we get there? What is going to happen? It, it builds a, a learner's um, thinking and researching skills. And they are going to have to plan for that. When they plan, they will also research the accommodation costs, the transportation costs, and everything. And the nice part is that when they do that, they write everything down. It's money. When they write everything down, it means that they will add somewhere they will subtract. That is them using our operation science that we use on a daily basis when we are in maths because they, they are always working. Our operation science, our addition, our subtraction, our multiplication, our division, those are the core signs we always use them at all times. And then now, here's another skill that we are striving as teachers, especially in the 4IR world, this uh, the four IR it's a world where technology is is taking over. So because we are in a world that technology is taking over, we're trying to make our learners to have new skills. So it comes to a play budget creation. It means that my learner has to now make a budget. When they make a budget, it's going to require critical thinking. They need to think. 
how can they minimize costs? Because nobody likes spending money and a lot of money. So, so when they do that, they must tell me. Then that's whereby you will check a learner if they know the difference between needs and wants, important things or not so important things, what they can live with, what they cannot live with, what they can do with, what they can do away with, you know? And then they, they will write everything there. And then going further, though going further, they will have to they will have to do a presentation. Each student will have to present to me their budget plan. So when they do that, they will be doing it inside the classroom, all the learners listening. So they are going to be presenting what, what their destination is, how much are they going to spend, what are they going to buy and everything. So this on its own, the, the main, the, the main um, goal for this project, I, I'd want to teach them financial literacy without me sitting down with them and telling them, no, you cannot buy this with this amount of money. It is not worth it. But giving them that project on its own, it will teach them financial literacy. So I, I think that that project will be very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much for giving us a, a great insight into your projects. Uh, mm -hmm. We have two quick questions before we wind up the session. Uh, so <laughs> where where are you working at present? Is it a public school or private school? I'm working at a public school. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So are there any incentives given to students who come to public schools? In my region, uh, the students that come to public schools are given free uniform, free test books, and free meal. And above all, they are given uh, 15,000 15, Indian rupees every year as an incentive that come to school. Uh, do you have such incentives uh, uh, in being implemented in your country, especially in the public sector perspective? Oh my gosh, I'm coming, I'm coming to your region. <laughs> okay, um, in, in my region, when when you go to a public school, you get food. That's number one. You get breakfast and lunch so that you don't go hungry. And uniform is not for every learner. It they only give it to those learners that are, are struggling. But they do get free stationery. Books are for free, pens, pencils. They don't have to buy. They can just add, but they don't have to buy. Everything is is provided for. Everything is provided for. And another another thing, one last thing is that um all the public schools in South Africa, they are free. You don't have to pay any school fees. That is the most interesting incentive. And it means that every learner will go to school because education is is free you don't have to stress about any financial drain or any financial burden when your child has to go to school we are sorted yes. yeah yeah we have i have one more question uh okay. in this 21st century whether it is an english teacher or math teacher or a biology teacher or social science teacher one has to equip themselves with the updated knowledge. I mean, we have to update our professional knowledge from time to time. Uh, so do you have the refreshing sessions? I mean, resource sessions, uh, orientation sessions in subject wise from time to time. And how frequently do you have these sessions? And what are going to discuss in this particular the academic sessions? Okay. Mm. We usually have, well, it, it varies. It, it differs from school to school, department to department. 
So what happens is that um, the, the, the government, the government uh, issued out that we should be having this competency skills. But then as, as a school, where I'm working from, where I'm working from, we have what we call days where we meet and we discuss everything that that has to do with technology and the skills that we as teachers need so that we can thrive because in the near future it's going to be a bit difficult because it's not going to be like now <laughs> because technology is taking over so in in in, in my school we we do it on a two weeks cycle in a month yeah we we do that so we sit down and we engage with each other so we're going to be strategizing okay if if we are teaching like we'd come together as math teachers uh we we outline our problems and our progresses and then we see to it that how can we now address these problems and how can we up our positives? But then before going there, here are the major skills or competencies, actually competencies that we strive for. We strive for critical thinking. We strive for collab collaboration. Oh, I'm sorry. Those, those we, 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 we strive for creativity. We strive for, for creativity all the time. So in all our lessons, when you when you plan for a lesson as a teacher, you, you need to touch on this, this thesis. And also the last one is computational thinking. So all the time when you plan a lesson as a teacher, you strive for these forces. When you strive for these forces, I am telling you, your, your learners are going to be equipped with so much knowledge and yourself as well. Because at the end of the day, you're going to look at your lesson. Did it build any creativity? Did it trigger something for the learners to become more creative? Did it make my learners to think critically? Or was it just a matter of teaching them and then said, oh, okay, yes, ma'am, we understand, we know, and just answering. So we always strive for these forces all the time. So yes. Okay. Thank you so much for giving us great information. And what is the retirement age for uh, teachers uh, working in the public sector in South Africa? 65 years of age. Okay. Here is 62. Hello, students. One more time. I, this is what I want to tell you. School is, is not easy. I know it's not easy. But at the very same time, it is not difficult. You start now. You, you, start, you start now. There, there's never a greater time to start besides now. You don't start next year. You don't start when you, when, when you are down and out. You don't start after you have failed. You start now. Uh, whatever that may be, the pro whatever topic that is challenging, I am telling you one advice. Use your teacher. Bother your teachers. <laughs> they are there for a reason. Because I, I also advise my learners that they must use me. You must use this, this say. No matter how small the problem is, you go to him and ask him, say, how can I do this? Say, I am struggling, I am stuck. He will help you. That's why, that's why we are teachers. We are teachers because we are always available. We are always ready. And we always have the energy and the strength to help you. So don't ever allow yourself to fail, please. Do not. You can do a lot of things, but don't allow yourself to fail. Use us. Use us as your teachers. That's the advice that I can give you. And also, good luck in your studies. Thank you.
thank you so much miss s for your uh, great time and we have learned many interesting and intriguing facts about uh, math teaching and as well as uh, south african based education system